I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Hi there, new Ishing trash can owner. And yes, the trash can is the name of a quadcopter, not an actual trash can. But uh, why'd they name it that? I, I, the Ishing trash can is going to be a lot of people's first quadcopter. And if that's you, then that's what I'm here to help you with. I'm here to help you set it up because... You may not have known this, but they, they don't come from the manufacturer just ready to fly. There's a little bit of work you got to do to get them working. But that's what I'm for. I help people get their quadcopters in the air. And if this is your first time here, I'd like to get to know you. And let's start by going through the setup of the Ishin trash can. Now, setting up this quadcopter is going to involve a piece of software called Betaflight. And in order to use Betaflight, you're going to have to download and install it, and you're going to have to download and install some drivers on your computer. And I already made a video going through all of those steps. It's called Betaflight 3.4 and 3.5 for total beginners. And as much as I hate to just say, oh, pause this video, open another tab, and go follow that video, it's about probably about 20 minutes of stuff you got to do. Don't worry. You only have to do it just this once. But if this is your first quadcopter, I'm going to put a link down in the video description to that video. And I want you to go through that video and get Betaflight installed and get it connected to your quadcopter. There's additional stuff in that video that doesn't apply to the Ishin trash can. So don't watch the whole video. Well, watch it if you want to. But then get Betaflight installed. Get your quadcopter connected and come back here and let's go through the setup of this specific quadcopter. Welcome back. So here I am, I've got my Ishin trash can plugged in to the USB and I can see up here in the upper right-hand corner of my window, I've got COM3, I've got a new COM port and that tells me I'm ready to connect. Yay, I'm connecting to the trash can. Now, the first thing you need to do is you need to bind the trash can to your transmitter. Now I have the FreeSky uh, X9D transmitter, that is a very popular one, but there's a lot of others out there. Free Sky transmitters, Spec transmitters, Fly Sky transmitters, and exactly how you bind it is going to vary depending on which one of those you've got. I'm going to show you how I do it here on my Free Sky one, and in order to do that, I'm going to go back over to the bench right there, and then we'll. No, oh, it's over there. <laughs> I'm going to go back over to the bench, and then I'll walk you through it. To bind the trash can, I'm going to press menu on the Tyrannus, then page, and I'm going to go all the way to the bottom of the screen, or I'll just press up and just scroll around through the bottom. And we're going to go to the internal RF here on my uh, Tyrannus, and we're going to bind it in D16 mode. You may recall that for the Mobula, I was getting, uh, basically the flight controller was locking up uh, when I bound in D16 mode, and I had to drop to D8 mode. Um, which has some disadvantages. I have a video about that if you want to hear more about that. I'll link it in the video. In the There it is, in the video description down below. But we're going to bind this guy in D16 mode. This is a different flight controller. It's an F4, not an F3. And we're going to see if it has the same problems. Uh, then I'm going to go down to bind. I'm going to hit bind and... Oh yeah, oh, I got to pick channel 1 through 8 telemetry on. If you want to know about that screen, there's another video I made talking about what that option does, but you don't actually really need to know. Just ch hit channel 1 through 8 telemetry on, and that beeping indicates the Tyrannus is in bind mode. Binding is one place where the trash can definitely improved on the Mobula 7. So the Mobula 7 bind button is like right in here underneath. It's a little hard to get in there and press. It's not impossible, but it, it's a little annoying. On the trash can, the bind button is right here on the bottom, and... It's just a little bit more accessible because it's not up underneath the uh, underneath the canopy. But there's even an easier way, and that is you can get to bind by going to the Betaflight command line and simply typing bind. This is something that's only possible because this is an onboard receiver onboard the flight controller. You can't do this with your normal FreeSky receivers that are connected with a UART. So. We're going to push the button here. We could also do it from the command line. Just grabbed a couple of spare batteries here off the bench. We're going to plug them in. And it is also super nice. And this was true for the Mobula as well. You do not have to hold down the bind button while you plug in. You just have to see the light is blinking. And I'm going to get in here very carefully. I should really be using a plastic poker, not a metal one. But I'm going to 
very carefully get in here and poke the find button for two seconds. Nope, I didn't get it. There we go. Lights went solid. I think that means it bound. Yeah, that, there we go. Definitely. Okay. I felt it click that time. So now let's power cycle and see. Power off. We'll take the Tyrannus out of bind mode and. Solid red LED. I think that probably means it's bound. It was flashing before, but the sure sign will be that we will go into the Tyrannus, hit escape a couple times, hit exit, and yeah. So right here we see we've got RSSI, and that means that we're bound. Yay! So now that you've bound your transmitter, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the receiver tab, and we're going to look, and we should see that when I move the transmitter sticks on the Tyrannus, or whatever your radio is, you should see that the channels move here in the receiver tab. But things aren't quite right. So you see that when I move my throttle, there's a little bit of latency there, that's kind of weird. When I move my throttle, the elevator is moving, and when I move my yaw, well, yaw appears to be correct. How about pitch? P roll, yeah, uh, that's not roll, that's pitch. And that's not throttle, that's roll. So what's going on here is that my channel mapping is incorrect. The channel mapping tells the flight controller what order your control channels are coming in. And it basically needs to match what you've got on your transmitter. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit menu and then page a couple times on my Tyrannus until I get to the mixer screen. And I can see my channel order here. Channel one is aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder. So I would say my channel order is A-E-T-R. Now, one way you can do that is you can just type that here in your channel map, A-E-T-R. Or there's actually a preset for it. And I believe it's the, yeah, the free sky preset. So if I do that and then I hit save, there we go. And we can just verify that our channels are moving throttle, yaw, roll, and pitch. Excellent. So now our channel order is correct. Here you can see that when I move my yaw stick all the way to the left, the value I've got here is 988. And Betaflight wants that to be 1000. And likewise for the throttle, it's 988. And if I move the throttle all the way up, I've got a value of 2012. And in fact, if I look, I think all the sticks are going to be about the same. 2012 at the top, 988 at the bottom. And that is going to make the work we do really easy. So I'm going to make a note for each of these channels, roll, pitch, yaw, and throttle, the first, second, third, and fourth channel. I'm going to make a note of the lowest by holding the stick all the way to the left or all the way down and the highest by holding the stick all the way to the right or all the way up. I'm going to make a note of those four values. Just write them down. Then I'm going to go to the CLI. And what I'm going to do is type RX range 0. And then I'm going to type the lowest and the highest value for the first of those channels. The one in my case, I think it was roll was at the top of the list. RX range 0, 988, 2012. And I'm going to keep that RX range 1. That's for the second one. Why, why did we start from zero and count? We're going to count zero, one, two, three, not one, two, three, four. We start at zero because programmers are just, would like to be confusing. So for the second line, it's going to be RX range one. And in my case, the numbers are the same, 988, 2012. Okay. I'm going to keep doing that and I'll just stop halfway through and show you the effect. Here in the receiver tab, you can see that for the roll axis now, my endpoints are correctly 1,000 and 2,000. And likewise for the pitch axis, 2,000 and 1,000, because that's channels 0 and 1. And we can do that RX range 2 and RX range 3 for yaw and throttle. And that'll make the endpoints be exactly right. The other thing I need to do is I need to get my channel centers approximately correct. The channels need to center pretty close to 1,500. If the channels are not centering, and you can see mine are pretty close. This one's 1,503. That one's 14. That's all, that's all pretty good. If they're not centered close to 1500, the quad will drift. It will it will want to roll to one side or the other, and you'll constantly be fighting that with the stick. The way to fix that is to change the stick center value right here. And most 
most of them are going to, you're just going to kind of split the difference. So here, mine are pretty close to 1500, but if yours were like 1518, 1521, et cetera, you would just set the stick center to about 1520 and they should be pretty close. The next thing you need to do is set up the switches on the transmitter to tell the quadcopter what you want it to do, like arm and fly, or maybe you want it to be an auto level mode, or maybe you don't, et cetera. Now the trash can comes with these modes preset. So all we have to do is set up our transmitter to match those modes. I'm going to hit menu and then page until I see the mixer screen. And the mixer is where you tell the transmitter which switch is going to be associated with which aux channel on the, on the receiver. So if we go to the receiver tab, we can see that there are several a bunch of aux channels here and each of these aux channels is going to be used to control some different function uh, on the quadcopter so here in the receiver tab you can see the channels that we've got here's the first four channels are being used for roll pitch yaw and throttle and then we have additional channels and these are just referred to as aux channels and they're used to control various functions like telling the quadcopter when to arm on the tyrannus we need to actually manually map the switches to the channels and I'll show you how to do that. On Spectrum and FlySky transmitters, usually some of these switches are already mapped by default. And you can figure that out by going to the receiver tab and just start flipping switches. And you may see one of these aux channels move. For example, as you flip the upper left switch, you may see aux one move. As you flip one of the other switches, you may see aux two move. If your switches are pre-configured to move an aux channel, then you're good to go. You just need to sort of adjust the mode so everything is how it needs to be. In my case, and if you have an open TX radio like a Tyrannus, they will not be preset and you'll need to do that manually. The way I'm going to do that is, let's see, so arming mode is aux one and aux one is channel five. The first four channels are your control, your main controls, and then the first aux channel is channel five. So I'm going to go down in the mixer to channel five and I'm going to long press enter and that'll create a new mix. I'm then going to go to the source parameter and the source parameter controls what switch or other control is controlling this aux channel. And I'm going to hit enter one time. Now this is the arming switch. And what I like to use for the arming switch is this upper left here. This is a nice big two position switch in the upper left. Some people prefer to use this switch here on the front of the Tyrannus. It's a three position. You can use whatever you like, but I'm going to just flip that one time. And you can see right here, this has filled in switch SF as the source. Now I'm going to hit exit. And what you should see here in Betaflight is that as I flip that switch, this little yellow indicator moves, telling me the channel is moving and I'm, con I'm controlling that aux channel. Now, the next question I want to ask myself is, what position do I want arming to be in? And what I like to do is I like to flip the switch away to arm and towards to disarm, because when I want to disarm, I can just kind of bleh, slap it with my hand, whereas arming is kind of a little bit of a more delicate flip. So you can see right now that the logic is the opposite of that. Right now, when the switch is pulled towards me, this indicator is overlapping with the yellow right here. And that's telling me I will be armed with the switch towards me and disarmed because it's outside of the yellow when I push the switch away. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that switch and put it into the armed position. And then I'm gonna move this yellow part here so that it overlaps with that armed position right there. And then I'm gonna hit save. We can do the same thing for angle mode with aux two. I'm gonna hit exit to back out of that aux one mix that I was working on. And I'm gonna do the same thing for aux two, which is channel six. I'll hit enter. I'll go down to source and I'll ask myself, which switch do I wanna use for angle mode? Hmm, let's see. I think I'm just going to use this switch right here in the upper right. So I'll flip that switch one time and it'll fill it in as the source. And now I'll exit and back out. Now, when I flip that switch, I can see this little yellow indicator moving. Great. And this actually is pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty good with this. So what we've got here is, let's say that when the switch is in the middle position, we're in angle mode. And when the switch is in the down position, we're in air mode. When the switch is in the up position, we're in none of the above. Middle down. 
perfect. Uh, what's air mode? Well, let's save that topic for another video. And finally, we have flip crash mode, which is aux three. Mm, yeah, okay. And we could do the same thing and set up a third switch for aux three to use to activate flip crash mode, which is turtle mode that's used to flip the quad over if it's upside down after a crash. Okay, so that's how you set up your flight modes. One more thing I recommend you do is here in the configuration tab, you scroll down, see this arming setting here? This prevents you from arming the quad when it is not flat and level. And for big quads, this might be an important safety check to keep the, you from accidentally arming the quad like when you're holding it in your hand. But this little guy is not gonna hurt. It's not gonna hurt too many people, hopefully, if it, if it arms. And so we can disable that by setting max arm angle to 180. And that will mean it can always arm regardless of whether it's straight up and down or not. It's a good thing to do. If you're gonna fly the trash can in auto level mode, you may find that it isn't, it just like drifting. Right, so you put it in auto level mode. As soon as you flip to angle mode, that's that's auto level. As soon as you flip to angle mode, it goes and tries to roll to the right or something. If that happens, you may need to trim the accelerometer. I do have a separate video about accelerometer accelerometer trim, shush, accelerometer trim that uh, that I link you to down in the video description. Another thing you might consider doing is customizing your on-screen display. The uh, the trash can comes with the on-screen display set. In, well, it's Let's be, I wanna be honest, it's a little cluttered. I think it's a little cluttered. Here in the OSD display, you can drag these items around so they appear wherever you want on screen. You can turn individual items on and off and uh, you can you could just do it however you like. If you're a minimalist, maybe you wanna switch them all off and just have like the one you really want is the main battery voltage. That's gonna tell you, you know, how many, what, uh, what your, when your battery's dead. You wanna stop flying when your battery gets down to about, 3.2 volts. On the bigger quads, we stop a little bit higher, but on these little quads, we really just run the battery like I'm completely dry because otherwise you just don't get a lot of flight time. Main bat voltage. There's various other things you can put on there. It's up to you. Oh, another one that's very common is the uh, craft name, which you, that's your, uh, your call sign. You can put that maybe like in the upper left and we'll save that. And you can go in the configuration tab and then down here, right here, you can put your call sign, whatever your pilot name is. <laughs> yeah, good things to have on the OSD, or you just leave it at, there's no reason you wouldn't just leave it at the defaults. Well, okay, now you are ready to fly your trash can. And there's a phrase I never thought I'd hear myself say, <laughs> and so am I, I'm gonna go review it. If you had any trouble following along, let me know down in the comments, or sometimes there's so many comments, I, I just don't even see them. YouTube doesn't know. I try to answer them all, but YouTube just doesn't notify me. So if you need help, you can also just message me on Facebook. I'll do my best to help you out because uh, that's what I do. And if you are new here, welcome. That is what I do. I help people get helicopters flying their best, help them you know, get over all these stupid hurdles that there are to actually enjoying this freaking annoying, wonderful hobby. Hope you stick around. Uh, I do want to let you know this is my full-time job. And if you find yourself watching a zillion of my videos and really enjoy them, learning a lot, then I do have a Patreon where you can support me for a couple bucks a month and help me put food on the table. Also, the other way you can help is by using the affiliate links down in the video description. The any purchase you make after clicking one of those affiliate links, and it is any purchase, not just this one linked like quadcopter or whatever. Anytime you shop at one of those affiliated vendors, click one of those affiliate links first and I'll get a small commission. It helps me out and it doesn't cost you anything. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy flying.